Hey YouTube, I don't. I guess I don't really do videos often anymore, but I just got Tile. It's one of the substrates that I recommend the most. Like, there's hardly any cons. It conducts heat really well. Uh, most people haven't heard of it, but it's permanent unlike any other substrate. Easy to clean, it looks really good, etc. And there's no impaction risk. I have some EcoEarth in the hides um, to make them more comfortable. That's why I'm also still using EcoEarth because the geckos can dig in it and it's more comfortable. So, yeah. So, yeah, I should conduct heat really well, but unfortunately, like, the temperature isn't warm enough ever since I put the tile in there. I think the heat mats aren't big enough. Like, I th thought of that before I put the tile in there, so I'm going to be getting bigger heat mats. I already got one for Toothless, but I need to get one for Sunset still. Like, there was no more of that size. Surprisingly, they're still eating. I really hope they can digest their food. Well, I'm sort of worried. Anyway, Sunset's over there on her hammock. Um, and yeah, so if you decide to get Tile, you can find it at Home Depot, Lowe's, probably at Petco, I think. I got mine at Lowe's, and if you get Slate Tile, then you're gonna want to seal it, because if urine gets on it, then, like, the bacteria will get into the tile, into the slate, unless you seal it. Or you could just, like, put... Um, paper towel or something where the geckos go to the washroom so it doesn't get on the tile. Uh, and you're probably going to want to put something like EcoEarth or sand would be better because it conducts heat um, more easily. Like you want to put that in the cracks and underneath the tile. Oh, and you also want to make sure that the tile is textured um, and not like smooth so the geckos don't have trouble walking on it. So yeah, it's, it's really good. Uh, yeah. As you can see, lots has changed in Toothless's tank. First of all, I took out the paper towel. Like, the only reason I had I didn't change that to EcoEarth right away was because I planned on getting a bigger tank. Um, it would be better if this tank was a little bigger. Like, it's the minimum, but yeah. But as you can see, there isn't really much space for me to make it bigger, so this will do. Um, so yeah, I finally changed it to EcoEarth and Tile, and uh, the hides are switched around. Okay, so if your leopard gecko staying in the cool hide a lot, then one thing that might work is uh, switching the hides because sometimes leopard geckos prefer one hide more than the other. Like, Toothless was staying in his cool hide a lot, so I switched them, worked like a charm. He just prefers um, the cave hide. Some leopard geckos prefer hides with two entrances, but um, he, d he prefers like hides like a cave. I guess they're more secure. So yeah, if your leopard gecko staying in the cool hide, that might be the reason why. The temperature could also be wrong on the warm side, but yeah. Um, and I also took the branch away. I want to put that back. Like he pooped on it. I haven't cleaned it yet. It's it would be more stimulation for him if I put it back. So I should probably take care of that soon. So in Scorch's tank, okay, so our heat mat started overheating, and I didn't have a thermostat. Uh, so I was using a ceramic heat emitter by the um for her heat by the way that's good for extra heat for leopard geckos if a heat mat isn't enough heat because that's often the case in winter so here's the real stat it's different from my leopard geckos thermostat i have it on low she never really seems to go on the warm side like okay so i have one thermometer between my three reptiles i should have uh one for each reptile but i don't i really want to get a temperature gun it's just as accurate as a digital thermometer with a probe, which is what I have now, and it'll be so much easier to read the temperature. Uh, but I really don't think it's too high, it's on low, so I really wish Scorch would use that. I hope she can digest her mice okay. <laughs> there she is. She really likes coming out when I talk to her. It's often a challenge to find her head. <laughs> so now I'm going to feed the leopard gecko silkworms. I know it would make more sense to do this at the start of the video, but to be honest, this video has been filmed over two days. I just got the superworms, I mean, silkworms today. So yeah, I could have made a separate video, I suppose, but it would have been really short. So anyway, uh, so this is a silkworm. Pretty funky looking. They're great to feed your leopard gecko, but if you decide to get them, I wouldn't get them in large quantities um, because, like, apparently they're really hard to keep alive. They only eat one sort of food. So that's why I'm feeding these guys off um, right away. 
I fed the leopard geckos this only once before, and actually both went to sunset. I, w I, I tried to feed one to Toothless, but um, he wasn't really hungry then. So anyway, sunset's um, in a hard place to feed her right now. One second. Okay, um, so now I have a bowl since sunset's up there, and I prefer not to disturb her. Okay, you see it? Um, let's just see if she sees it. See a sunset? You know what? It might be easier to feed Toothless first. Might have to get her down from there. So yeah, this will be Toothless's first super worm. He's very excited. Oh. Come on. There. Oh, I'm only feeding them two today because these guys are sort of big. Um, they count as two crickets, so, yeah. Okay, so he sees the second one, and he's gonna strike. There. Okay, I guess now for Sunset. I'm gonna have to get her down from her hide. Well, Sunset just did an offensive tail wag. I would have recorded it, but she stopped before I could. Anyway, I'll try to feed her. Please don't go back into your hide, baby. I'm gonna try to do it on the tile instead of the eco earth. Um, here's a couple. Eight. Oh yeah, she sees them. So yeah, these are one of the many worms you can feed your leopard gecko. So if you can find them, I highly recommend them. There's other worms like corn worms and super worms. And she got one. They're sort of connected with some silk there. Okay, so she can get the second one now. Oh, and I also got a temperature gun. I'll show that in a second when she's done. I think I've made a couple changes in her tank since the last video, too. And there goes the second one. So, here's my temperature gun. Um, yeah, just as accurate as uh, my digital thermometer with a probe, as I said earlier in the video. But it's a lot easier to use. So I'll check out Scorch's temperature and adjust it from there. Okay, I'm going to need to wrap this up because one of my cats is um, asking to go outside and they get grumpy when they go don't get let outside. I'll do some videos about my cats um, in the future, mostly leopard geckos though. Anyway, so as you can see I took out a few hides in Sunset's tank. She still has the two hide minimum. Uh, the branch one and eggs... Well, okay, so she could like barely squeeze into those and she's gonna get bigger so she won't even be able to fit in them in the future and like her branch one, even though she liked it, like it was really difficult to get her out of it to feed her so yeah, I, I just took that out. And the rock one, she didn't even use it. She doesn't even use this one so I guess I sort of wasted my money. I don't know why, like it's definitely not too exposed. Oh crap, it's backwards at the moment. Just noticed that. It has glow in the dark rocks. I mean, oh my gosh, rocks. Uh, mushrooms. And yeah, it's a good sized hide. Um, so I think that might be it for this video. Uh, so I hope you liked it. Uh, please give me su suggestions for future videos. Uh, and consider subscribing. And yeah, I'll answer any questions in the comments. Bye.